Texas and Mississippi have had that, and we have not had that, and it's the cost of doing business in our state. I don't know how many of you realize this, but, but Miami has the highest medical malpractice insurance premiums of any city of its size in the country, or any, any large city. And Florida, on average, has the highest medical malpractice insurance premiums of any state. And that's wrong. And we can't keep doing it that way. When a young person graduates from medical school, and he or she decides that they go do their residency, and then they decide where they're going to go practice medicine, not enough of them are choosing Florida. Now, in a given area, you may have plenty of doctors, but on average, <coughs> all over Florida, we have a significant shortage of doctors today, and many specialties are really hurting. And we look out to the future, this can't continue for our state. It isn't just about my 95-year-old dad's health care. It's not just about my children or grandchildren or yours and their health care. It's about business. It's about bringing business in here. It's about creating the environment so businessmen can say, hey, we have confidence in Florida. We're going to come to Florida. We're going to be there. We'd like to be there. But they're not going to do that when they don't see that we're with it. And it isn't just malpractice. It's a whole range of litigation costs that we've got to reform and deal with. The trial bars had their way in our state far too long. And then we have to face these tough issues I'm not going into tonight unless you get me on the question and answers, and I'm happy to do that. But that's property insurance, that's Windstorm homeowners, property taxes, and you probably do know that I have a provision out there I've recommended that for a two-year timeout that we freeze the millage rate at current levels because I don't believe as property values go down in our state, they will go down in appraised value over the next couple of years, we ought to have local governments jacking up the taxes. So wrong time to see any kind of tax increase uh, in our state. And then the third thing is water. So property insurance, property tax, and water. They're very tough issues. And as a governor, I'm going to bring the best and the brightest. I already started doing advisory boards together from academia, from retired community, business community, from professions. And we're going to get them to work with us to outline for the people of Florida, for you, exactly what are the problems in each of those issue areas and what are the solutions, what are the options. And we're going to have them preferably recommend what they think is the best. And after that, we're going to have a conversation with the people of Florida. And we're going to reach some consensus on what to do. But do you know what? We aren't going to reach consensus completely. Not everybody's going to agree. Not everybody's going to agree. But it's got to be more than it is today. And then we're going to solve those problems, those three really tough problems. Now, I've given you all the issues for our state and a little bit of perspective on the nation. The good news for Florida is we don't have to solve all those problems to get businesses to move here. We don't have to solve all those problems to get our small business growing again. We don't have to solve all those problems in order to get the venture capital to come that we need so badly in our state that's not here now. All we have to do is have the roadmap. We need to have the plan. We need to let the rest of the world know that Florida is generally headed in the right direction, that we're about addressing those problems, that we're about solving those problems, and then they're going to come, and they're going to be part of that solution. They're going to see we understand how to grow and water and fertilize business, and we know what it needs to have a better Florida for our children and our grandchildren. And you know what? When that happens, it's going to be a better Florida. And we're going to have a state where anybody with the initiative can start a small business and grow it and do well by their family. And we're going to have a state where every child has an opportunity for a 21st century education, and every good teacher is rewarded. And we're going to have a state where when you work all your life with the sweat of your brow and you put aside your savings and you can retire and then you can enjoy it and, and hopefully you can pass it and any property you have onto your children and grandchildren. And we're going to have a state where the beaches and the rivers and the lakes and the things that make Florida Florida are there for our children and our grandchildren. And that will be a better Florida for them than it is today for us. And you know what? It, all it takes is leadership. All it takes is leadership. And I am ready. And with your help, I know the, the people of Florida are, with your help, I'm going to be elected the next governor of Florida this fall. Thank you very much. Thank you. I, I know you have a series of questions, and I want to set the record straight on one that may encroach on that question before you do it. I am strongly committed and believe and have all throughout all this debate that's been going on in the amended Arizona immigration law by which you may be <laughs> You need to know that as Attorney General, I'm well aware of this, there is not a police officer or a deputy sheriff in the state that today, under Florida law, 
doesn't have permission, when he makes an arrest to check to find out if somebody's legal or illegal, and they ought to have their whatever kicked if they don't, the reality is today if you don't have your driver's license, you get taken down and booked, you got to prove who you are. Now, are we doing as much as we could do? I don't think so about immigration. I fought that battle in Congress a long time. I served on the House Immigration Subcommittee quite a while. And I was there for Simpson Mazzoli. That name may mean nothing to you. But that's when we passed the law that I fought for to make it, make it, it illegal for an employer to knowingly hire an illegal immigrant. And I also was the one who led the fight in 1986 against amnesty. And I had an amendment on the floor of the House that was close but no cigar. That amnesty at that time was nothing compared to what it would be like today. I absolutely am opposed to any idea that we allow anybody who's here illegally to get on a path to citizenship. That is wrong. That is wrong. 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 And, we need, and we need to enforce those laws. Long ago, I advocated that we make the Social Security card, the new ones that are issued, as tamper-resistant as the $100 bill, because they're the documents, along with your driver's license, that are used to prove you're here, eligibly here. Of course, you could have a, a you know, visa or whatever, but that's what we commonly use. And they're the most fraudulently produced documents in the world. Our driver's license are better today, but these Social Security cards still are not properly made into a foolproof or less likely to be tampered with type of system. But I favor enforcing the law. I favor us getting rid of those who shouldn't be here. Now, we ought to have a guest worker program, a legal ways that some can come here and take some jobs, because there are industries like the fern industry, I was up there yesterday, that absolutely can't get workers to do what they got to do. You read about people in patches of blueberries or whatever. But those people should be here temporarily. They should be here with papers and documents, and then they should go home when they finish doing whatever work they're going to do. And that's the way the system ought to work. The border ought to be secured. And we ought to enforce the law, and I'm going to use whatever it takes with regard to Florida's law and working with legislators right now, when I'm governor, to make sure that our law enforcement officials have even more power. And I add one last comment to you. What we need right now in Florida more than anything else is a law that requires employers, particularly employers who have contracts with the state of Florida or any of our agencies, to check the e-verify system when they hire someone. Now, E-Verify is not perfect. It's not as good as the system the police check, but it is there. And if they don't do that, they should be held accountable. And we shouldn't mandate they do that. In fact, there should be a federal law, which there's not, that mandates that provision today. Well, I just want to be emphatic with you because somebody who's missing here tonight ran $5 million worth of $20 million telling you the wrong thing about me. So I don't have the money to respond to all of it, but I can come tell you. With that, I want to tell you it's been a pleasure talking to you. I know I'm going to answer some questions tonight. I love the energy you have in the Tea Party movement. I know there are roughly 40 in the state that are Tea Party uh, various organizations. And I'm just thrilled by the fact you're out there doing it because we need to take our country back and we need to take our state back. So I'm looking forward to your questions and I'm excited about your presence. So thank you. Thank you.